Hey, good morning. Welcome to Sunrise Extra on a Thursday. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ooh, we right. are talking Almost. drama. Drama this morning. Yes. yes. If you guys have even heard of the Olympics, mm. um, you have <laughs> Wait a minute. been hearing <laughs> about Barney's. Unless me, you've been right? living under a rock is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> People, you've heard about this um, doping controversy regarding a Russian figure skater. She's 15. Yeah. Um, she just skated this morning mm -hmm. for the final round. I don't know. The long program. Guys, the, the long program. Mila Valier. Rod, you want to step yeah. in here and clean this thing yes. up? <laughs> I know nothing, so I'm going to stop talking. David and Rod, you guys probably know the most. Well, we were watching this. Um, I was watching on David's phone during the newscast. Yes, yeah, so she had the top score after the short program, which means she skates last. The top score in the we had a mic issue here. Yep. There we go. The top score in the uh, short program, which means she goes last in the free skate. So her Russian teammates went. The Japanese skater, who I think was fourth or third, went, and then so she skates last, and she's known for her, her quads, loading it up the back end of the program where you get extra points. And I was just watching, my jaw was dropping because she fell. She fell, she put her hand down, she stumbled. It was almost every jump. But let's um, give some background, know? David. Explain, um, and actually we do have a story. Maybe uh, we should use it to set it up, because that really does. Let's do that. So our Verify team explained what happened with this young skater and also how it is different than Shikari Richardson, you may have remembered, um, who was a track star in the Summer Games, yeah. who was mm -hmm. supposed to, you know, who was running in Eugene for the Olympics. So watch this. Camila Valieva returned to the ice to compete in the women's short program in figure skating. The Russian Olympian was cleared by the Court of Arbitration for Sport to compete after she tested positive for a banned substance back in December. Soon after the court's decision, American sprinter Shakari Richardson suggested on Twitter there was a double standard because she was forced to miss the Tokyo Games after she tested positive for THC. Richardson said she smoked marijuana to cope with her mother's death. Richardson and told her half million followers that the only difference I see is that I'm a black young lady. So let's verify. Are Richardson's and Valieva's circumstances the same? Our sources are the Court of Arbitration for Sport, the International Olympic Committee, the World Anti-Doping Agency, the Russian Anti-Doping Agency, USA Track and Field, the International Skating Union, and sports attorney Howard Jacobs, who specializes in anti-doping cases. Jacobs explains Richardson's case is very straightforward and by the book. She tested positive, and less than two weeks later, U.S. anti-doping officials reported the results and imposed a 30-day suspension, which meant Richardson would miss the Olympics. Richardson also did not file any appeals and instead agreed to the suspension. And that's how it's supposed to happen during, you know, an Olympic trials or competition that, that you know, is, is pre-Olympics. And if you contrast that to what happened in the Valieva case, the, the contrast is pretty stark. Valieva's sample was collected in December, but it took six weeks for the results to come back, and the Olympics were already underway. The Russian anti-doping agency then suspended her, but unlike Richardson, Valieva appealed to Rusada, and the agency agreed to let her compete. The World Anti-Doping Agency, the IOC, and the International Skating Union appealed that decision to the Court of Arbitration for Sport, which decided to uphold the decision to allow Valieva to compete. This also highlights another difference with Richardson. The IOC and WADA only stepped into Valieva's case after they disagreed with Rosada's decision. Pretty unusual for a provisional suspension to be set aside uh, by any agency, but to have it all happen you know, in the middle of the Olympics, it's never, I don't think it's ever happened. So it's false that Richardson's and Valieva's circumstances are the same. Valieva will continue competing at the Olympics, although it's possible she will be suspended later on and the IOC could retroactively invalidate any medal she's won. With your Verify, I'm Eden Lewis. Really the sort of issue here is all of that is a shadow, not only over her performance, but you know the other athletes as well, and I and I can imagine there's some relief that she came in fourth by a lot of people watching this competition because had she made the podium, the IOC said they were not going to hold a medal ceremony for anybody in that event until this was cleared up, and this could take months. They've got another sample from December to, ten, to test, and then you know who knows where it goes from here.
Yeah, and, and David, you know, uh, for me personally, I was, sometimes you're surprised by your own emotions. So I was very much, you know, you test positive, you don't get to skate. That should be simple. And right. then I found myself this morning really feeling for Valley Ava because I've watched her skate for the last couple of years. And I, I think it's an absolute that she didn't skate well this morning because of what's going on mentally she couldn't fight through it and perform physically on the ice because um, she just doesn't collapse on the ice. And guys, before you jump in here, just to Rod's point here, this is from a Scottish journalist here watching. He says that was hard to watch a 15 year old. Remember, she is 15, having a minor breakdown on the ice, crying her eyes out afterward. Yeah. Valia should never have been put in this position after failing a drug test. Her coaching team yes. should be banned from the sport. Yes, in a nutshell, that's perfect. Yes. Yes to all of it. Yeah, and remember, Russia is on probation, right. which is why they're skating as the Russian Olympic Committee and not just the country of Russia, uh, because of previous doping allegations in women's figure skating and their country skating organization. And okay. Brenda, you and I have been talking a lot about this, the documentary. Uh, remind me what it's called again. Oh, about um, Icarus. Icarus. Right, and about the state-sponsored doping passing, changing the urine samples, passing them through the wall, I think. One of the doctors or, or one of the, um, I should say, experts or top of Rosada, which is the Russian anti-doping team, you know, basically defected after that and came clean. And he's the subject of that documentary. So, I mean, no clear links from that, but this just raises so many questions. You no, know? totally. So can somebody give me, I cannot keep up with all the twists and turns in this particular saga, but at some point, uh, Valieva's coaches or the you know the Russian the ROC team um, said that she had some mix up with her grandfather's heart medication. Yes. Okay. Why was she taking medication period? Was there something that her mother said? I have read so many little tidbits, but does anybody know why the child was taking medication at all? By anybody we mean Willie Huey. Willie Huey, we know you're watching on the stream this morning. <laughs> Can you clear this up for us? Because uh, I don't have an answer to that specific question, Brenda. I haven't heard you know, what she was originally taking, whatever medication she was supposed to be taking for. Like, why was she taking right. it well, if it was supposed know, to be legitimate? And you know, to that point, we're getting drips and drabs that come out. Some are from officially from the IOC, and then you have a lot of journalists obviously working their own sources. So you have something that said her grandfather provided some testimony, but it was a video he recorded in his car about the, the mix up with the medication. And then you had something from her mother. <laughs> and so there's a lot of bits and pieces here. Uh, I guess the bottom line though is, and, and they'll even say this, the IOC will say it, veteran journalists are saying it, like Christine Brennan, I'm just looking at her tweets right here, uh, you know, formerly of USA Today, but she's been all over this, um, is that, Essentially, this is unprecedented. There's never been a decision like it. You talk about Shikari Richardson as well. That was straightforward, right? There's never been a decision like this. It's unprecedented. Even the Court of Arbitration for Sports, so that's who sort of went through the decision, who made that decision. It wasn't the IOC here, right? It's sort of the Supreme Court for Sport. They, pin, they pinned it largely on her age calling it extraordinary, right? They're trying to balance the damage that could be done to her right. versus the damage to the sport. And so you get this sense that, you know, it's not black and white. There's a lot of gray and shadow and mm -hmm. murkiness yeah. here. And that's part of the problem. Here's an interesting theory raised by uh, Kristen Lebensky. Good morning to you watching on our Facebook stream. She says she didn't, she hasn't watched the competition from this morning yet, but the fact that she fell mm -hmm. could be considered suspicious. Knowing that others wouldn't get their medals if she won could have been pro probably really hard on her. She skated fine the other night under the same circumstances. This is a lot of pressure even right. since oh the God. other night. I can't so it could just happen. be like the pressure of the world talking about her like this, or she did kind of fall on the sword and, you know. I think it's the first thing. Yeah. I yeah. really do. I mean, this has just been an international scandal. Mm -hmm. And she's a kid. I mean, I don't care what you think of her. She's a kid with a kid, you know, mindset and very much structured and run hard. You look at those Russian skaters, David, I don't know if you've like been tracking this when you're covering the Olympics, but they don't last long. They barely last mm. in Olympics. Um, I believe the gal who won last year is out 
out with, I mean, forever out, can't twist and, and spin because of some back injury, but they run them hard. And they, you know, this whole idea of aging out, and Rod Hill, I want to bring you in on this because I know your daughter is a figure skater, but let me just point this out. Mariah Bell, she's an American in the competition. Beautiful, beautiful skate, by the way. Came in 10th uh, to Hallelujah. Flawless. You got to watch it. Adam Rippon, remember him? He's one of her coaches. Okay, she's 25, right? We haven't had a figure skater, a female figure skater that old it doesn't it's not old. I know, right? <laughs> for almost 100 years but she tells the associated yeah. press she thinks the minimum age should be increased from 15 to 18 so here's mm -hmm. what she said right. quote you want these athletes to have an opportunity to have this be a profession not a one-year run i think it would promote the idea of longevity and somebody being 25 wouldn't be shocking at an Olympics. And there's also, let me add to that, David, uh, in the figure skating world, the, the, it's kind of like gymnastics in a way. Bottom line is physically, there's a certain things your body can do when you're 12 and 13. Then as a young woman develops and their bodies change, all of a sudden by the time they're 16, 17, it's not so easy to do what they were doing when they were 13. We saw that with Alyssa Liu, America's uh, uh, one of the Olympians, uh, three skaters representing our country. Uh, you know, Alyssa Liu, when she was 13, I think she won the U.S. Nationals. She came out of the gate doing the triple axel. I think she had a quad at the time. And then all of a sudden her body develops and she lost some of those jumps for a period of time. And now she's just now getting those jumps back. So I think that figures into that conversation as well. You know, should we be having this skater skate, you know, 18 after you have developed your body. Now let's see what you can do from 18 to 20 to 22 to Mariah Bell's case. 20, what did you say, 25 Mariah's? 25. Yeah. Rod, you follow the sport obviously a lot more than the rest of us because your daughter is so involved. Uh, never mind the age thing. It, it is a size thing though, right? I mean, there is there such a thing as a six foot tall figure skater, male or female? Uh, I don't keep up on people taller than I am. You know that, Drew. <laughs> But seriously. Well, you know, yes, you do. You see in the pairs, those guys look really, really tall. They look really tall. They're, they're, I think some of them are. Let me, let me, let okay. me do the Yeah, I think, uh, is it Ryan Bradley? I might not get, might not get the name correct. Uh, but, but there have been so, a, a number of men, I'm pretty sure, right around six feet tall. Vincent Joe is a little bit taller than, um, than uh, Nathan Chen is, who was uh, skating for the U.S. Right. and then had to step down because he tested positive. Nathan Chen only five foot six, though. Yeah, I think right. Vincent is five seven or five. Evan Lysacek yeah. is six two. Oh wow! Okay. Um, oh. Evan Bates is six two. Timothy Leduc is uh, six one. So yeah. I stand did. down. <laughs> now the great Eddie's Scott older. Hamilton. I've met Scott a couple of times. What a terrific gentleman, by the way. One of those, you know, he's become a celebrity in his own right. The former gold medal winner. Um, and, and he's pretty much exactly my height, which makes me really like Scott very, very much. <laughs> you know, folks, I just want to kind of pivot for a second because we've been talking about Kamila Valieva and the Russian Olympic Committee and a little bit of scandal and, and so on and so forth. But there's something, you know, you don't want this to take away. And, I, you know, there was a medals, there was a podium ceremony or flower ceremony and they will award medals from you don't want this to take away from the other skaters is I guess what I'm saying here and you True. look at the International Skating Union here I just want to bring this up um, governing body for figure skating globally <laughs> and they're flagging up the Japanese skater who came in third a Kaori Sakamoto delivers a flawless skate claims the bronze medal show some love to her and here she is right I mean I gotta say I watched this performance that she came in bronze it was flawless. It was stunning. She was there. The emotion was there. You see that smile on her face. This is what it's about, folks, yeah. right? At the top of your game, under all this pressure representing your country, your home, uh, your team, that's what it's about. Absolutely. And she, she did a beautiful short program, too. We were in awe. I was at home just watching in the living room. And she's just so fast across the ice, but so graceful. I think this is a different comment from Kristen Lebensky. You had uh, the original one, Nina, mm -hmm. but her, she said, second thought, there shouldn't be a protected person in the Olympics. Essentially, they were protecting her uh, in some ways because of her age. Mm. Kristen saying, if you aren't held to the same standards as the rest of the people in the field, maybe you shouldn't be competing with them. Perhaps this thing should be split into age groups. Kind of what we were talking about earlier, but she's right. I mean, and when I first heard that, I said, it makes sense to treat this person differently because she is only a child at 15, yeah. but we're, we are allowing her to compete with the adults, so to speak, or the, you know, the yeah. big kids. So maybe she should be held to those very same standards. And the age thing is weird, in my opinion, because to go back to Alyssa Liu, who skated on America's team this year, when she won the U.S. championships, I think she was 13, she was too young to make the, the Olympic team. So that's why we didn't see her in Pyeongchang. So then you get into the, 
Well, Kaishi can't even have your own American champion go in that case because she's too young. So there is some, I'm going to say, strangeness with the, with the age, uh, the whole age issue with the Olympics and who's eligible and who's not. Oh, I mean, I think this is going to spark, as I scroll through here looking to see what folks are saying, I think this is just going to spark a bigger conversation. I, I, I don't think we're going to be done with this at these games. And what, what's four years from now? I mean, you've got Worlds every year, right? Four years from now, you're looking at... Um, Milan Cortina, Italy um, for the next Olympics, right? So a lot changed between now and then. Uh, but Brenda, I think to your point too, um, or perhaps Rod, it was you, um, about aging out of the program. So, I mean, these Russian skaters, we probably wager won't see them in four years, right? We typically, I think Brenda made that point. And, you know, the bottom line is the Russians, that academy or school they come out of, they have a whole fistful of girls already doing quads, I think, that are 12. I think that's a true statement. So they just, man, they just turn them out. And you know, we'll get the next young ones in four years. Yep, we were talking about that the other day because when you look at some uh, video that's online of Valieva, when she was just an itty bitty tiny thing. And I'm sure that other countries do it as well, but Russia starts them doing crazy maneuvers when they're super, super young. Um, and to your point, Rod, about development, it is easier, allegedly, you know, to teach kids to do those things when their body size is little. And then I know some of the Russian skaters, I think it, I think it is skaters and not the gymnasts, but some of the, the skaters have come out now, um, now that they're done, and they talk about the intense, weird, dysfunctional um, ways that they trained. One of them was saying that uh, so they wouldn't look bloated or fat, they would even monitor their water. And she said, you know, they would just swish it around in their mouth and then spit it out. Jeez. So, I mean, there are all kinds of things that are just hugely wrong with the way we train kids um, to be upper level elite athletes. Well, I think as Americans, we assume that what we hear out of that Russian skating academy, that many of those aspects of that academy would not be tolerated in the United States. We assume that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, there have been allegations, though, about all kinds of things, you know, sexual abuse, um, the Carolis in gymnastics that they were, you know, um, you know, inappropriately, I don't know what the word is, cruel came to mind, but I don't think that's what they're accused of, like some really harsh physical punishments. There have been all kinds of allegations in this country with upper level elite athletes as well. Yeah, you're, yeah absolutely. Can I ask you this, Brenda Braxton? Mm. Will you watch tonight when NBC replays the individual skating event? Yeah, you know, my daughter is a huge skating fan too. She loves this. So she's already recorded it. I'm not going to have to wait till prime time. I was always already getting texts and she said, when you get home, we've got to watch this. And three Americans, um, uh, Karen Chin, Mariah Bell, Alyssa Liu, all skating tonight uh, as well. So and I got to say, no matter how you feel about all of this and, and the cloud that's come out of this, you know, there are some stunning, beautiful skates. You mentioned oh, yeah. Mariah Bell, um, Sakamoto, the, the Japanese skater here. It is worth watching for those moments. Don't let the sort of cloud, you know, kind of taint, taint the experience for mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Nina, I did not ask you if you were going to watch. I know the answer. I will hopefully <laughs> be asleep. <laughs> All right, that's going to put uh, this edition of Sunrise Extra to sleep, if you will. So we thank you for watching us today. We have a Friday to look forward to tomorrow. Yay! We hope to see you all then.